share my screen in here. Okay, good. The credit progress, share. Let me see if everybody can see my screen. It's good. Okay, CLPD, like, you know, I'm not running on the stack AutoCAD CLPD, I'm running on a custom AutoCAD CLPD. I mean, it's the same stuff, you know, it's whether you run the stack or, you know, the custom one, it's, you know, the workflow is the same. You define the same exact, you know, files, yeah. So when it comes about QTO, the QTO is available, you know, as part of the CLPD package, but um, I don't know how often it's used, you know, just because, um, it's, I guess it's usable up to a point, you know, as far as I've seen, yeah. So if you have to use the QTO, you're gonna find it, you know, in the Analyze tab, I guess, if I remember well, and it's right here, the QTO Manager. Now the QTO Manager relies on the fact that uh, you are supposed to have a list of items you are supposed to track stuff with, yeah. So that means, you know, you define those list of items. So if I start in here, QTO Manager, it pops up with a dialog box, you know, it's like a panorama for the QTO. And in here, you're gonna, pretty much in a little bit starting with the QTO manager. Now uh, to start with this one, as I said before, you have to have a list of items that you know you want to track. And those list of items were not defined as part of um, in right in here in AutoCAD, you know, so they're supposed to be defined outside in a, they're supposed to be defined outside in a, um, like in a text file, or if I remember well, there's another, maybe another format, you know. So when I say here, open pay item file, I'm gonna ask you like, you know, what you want to open and the format in here with the CSV comma delimited of Florida DOT. And I guess because Florida has its own big stuff and Azure Trans XML, but you know, typically I'm not, I've discarded the last two and I'm gonna focus on the CSV because it's the one that's mostly used and a CSV is easy editable by Excel. So because of the time, I'm gonna look for a CSV. Now, if you look at the format, you know, for a, you know, item file, you're gonna see that just look for a pay item ID, description, unit type, and a formula, the three items from here, the pay item ID description and unit types that manages part of the CSV where the formula is managing another file, yeah? So at the end, you know, you know, you actually need, you know, two files, you know, to make stuff work, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you're gonna have access also to the first file as the categorization file, but let's focus first on the first file and that one is the pay item file. And the pay item file is defined as I said before in like in a CSV kind of format, and I have right, one of them right in here with the CSV file. If I open it, yeah, I said, you know, it contains, you know, three of the columns in the QTO manager, but to be the be a bit item, the description and the uh, unit price. So if I come in here, this is the city of Austin's bid items, 101 and so on. You're gonna see this is the ID for it. And then the description, prepare right away and then the unit. And the units in here, you're gonna see the value defined for us is like, you know, this one, yeah, it's just what we define and stuff here. You can type in acres or station or lump sum and so on. But for us, you know, use uh, our units of the city. It's, you know, that's how we're defining the, our 300 view. And because of it, one, but we define it. So pretty much in here, you're gonna need, as I said before, only these three columns, you know, I don't care about the rest of them. You just need, you know, these three columns. So I define for each of these three columns, you know, the ID, what's the description for that one and how it's measured. Yeah. So once that one is defined, I'm gonna close it because if you have it open, you cannot load it. So let's say here, don't save. And I'm gonna to go to CLPD and load that specific file. So open pay item file, you're gonna ask me what type of file format. You're gonna see here the pay item file, pay item categorization file. So if I say pay item file, this is the one I'm looking for. And I'm gonna look in here to the C drive. And for our configuration, it's CLPD 2022. And I'm gonna find it in here and the references for you might be somewhere else. But in here, typically what we do with these PRM files, we take them and copy them to the project folder because you want to be able to modify it to be specific to that project, you know. If you, if you have one that's master for, you know, like all, all masters for, you know, all your projects, you're gonna have issues when you have to, you know, like uh, add, you know, extra items, you know, or, you know, change, for example, if one of the items is measured like, you know, one inch, two inch, three inches, or one. If you have like the way the city has, it just has an underscore inches, then pretty much you have to make duplicate of those ones. So because of that one, you can start with a master template and then from that one, you can copy to your project and modify this needed. But in here, I'm gonna open it from the location, from the master. And I'm not gonna open the PR and conversation file because typically if I go to this one and open it, you're gonna direct me to somewhere in the documents folder. And I, I found that, you know, this, this you know, the hardware, 
so typically you know you know if you don't want to go and browse you know you'd open the second you open you'd be opening the formula file but for now we're just opening the you know pay item file format here the pay item file click okay and you're gonna see if it is loaded it's ready to go there we have it we're gonna make it a little bit bigger so you're gonna have like you know the the pay item you're gonna have the description for that one if it's taken from the csv file and then you have the unit type if you remember, I said here that you know it's also looking for a formula. The formula is not defined as that CSV file, it's defined as a part of another file that's called the FOR file. It's a file type, and this is a formula file. Now, when it comes about the formula file, I don't recommend it to be editable in a outside, like in the notepad and so on. I recommend for it to be editable like into editing CMPD because it will take you too long and you're gonna have a tendency to mess up too much. Yeah? So if I look, for example, at the formula file that I have in here. This is a F4R file. Now, if you want to look at, you know, its structure itself, you can open maybe with a notepad and typically that's what I would do. And here I'm going to say that I'm using a notepad plus plus that's because I hate the regular notepad. So I'm going to use it, you know, something that's better than notepad. And I'm going to look, you know, what kind of looks like, you know, I'm going to say it's a pretty much, it's a XML type file format that looks, you know, to all the data that you have and it adds it to the stuff. So if you have to modify this stuff, you know, manually, it will take you forever. So rather than that one, pretty much I'm gonna say like, start the formula file and just add those, you know, those, um, let's say formulas. Yeah. So I'm gonna close in here and let's see how you do create the formula file. To create the formula file, you're gonna go in here by gonna say open, let's say open formula file and ask you here maybe to, you know, create one like an empty one F4 and, you know, and open it, yeah. Now, I guess that's how it is, no? I remember well, save as CSV, open formula file. And if you don't have one, you're gonna to have to create one or copy from some, some other place. Now, if I come in here, let's see if it works by way. I'm gonna create the one. I'm gonna say new text file, text document. I'm gonna call it this like test.for. Let me see like there, right there. So if I come in here and open the test.for, this is from, let me see, so we did here 2022 template zero four references. It's not though. Did I make it in our location? Where did I make it? Oh, it's in the demo. So be like on the C drive demo, there's the test FOR. Looks like it's loaded. And now you're gonna see that, you know, now I can define those formulas in here. So once it's loaded, I can define those formulas, okay. Stuff is still low working in here. Or am I missing? Okay, it's still working. Okay, so for example, I'm looking in here what type of formulas you can define. And here you're gonna see that you have you know, acres, station, lump sum, linear feed. Yeah? Now for each of these formula, you're gonna see that you have an option from that, like you know, some kind of like macros that run in the background. So for example, if I want to run here linear feed, you're gonna see that I can run here expressions and say here plus, like for example, and what we have is available here. It's in the item area, item count, item length, or part depth, yeah. So the formulas can be assigned, you know, you can take the formula from like maybe civil three parts, you know, or like, um, and that's maybe the coordinates and stuff. Like, and uh, the type of uh, uh, the type of uh, formula that can be used in here, as I say, it's item area. So this one takes the item area. And always, you know, this value, it's, you know, quantified in the units of your cat file, yeah. So item area, it's in square feet, that's how it's measured. So you pay attention to that one. Item count means how many, you know, how many items counts of the same type. Item length, it's, you know, gets in the units of the cat file, that's, you know, typically US survey feet, and then part depth, yeah. So for me, since I'm working with, uh, you know, in imperial linear feet and so on, I select this one, it's measured in linear feet. So because of that one, I'm gonna define the formula for this one to use the item length, yeah. So by doing so, I'm gonna click here, okay. And you're gonna see that it should have it in the, it should. But it looks like maybe I don't know, Maybe I have to take an, let's say another F4 file and save it because it's like, you know, by doing the save as doesn't do that one yet. So maybe I would take, you know, an empty one, like an F4 from somewhere, take, you know, maybe look you know, on how it's defined F4 file and do so. Now in here, I'm gonna load, you know, my F4 file just because, you know, it's already defined. So I'm gonna say open formula file and I'm gonna open in here my CLO desk, CLPD. 2022 template reference, whatever. 
adding a seabed, you know, for all my items in here, I define all the formats that I need. And most of the formats they use like in a seabed for an acre, it's the item area divided by 43560, and it gives you the area in acres. If it's a station, it's the item length divided by 100 and so on. I don't, you know, count, I said, for example, lump sum, it's an item count because I can assign it maybe to a specific item. If it's an each, you said item count, you're gonna see it for copy for um, QB cards, and I said I define this volume. However, we don't have the volume defined anywhere, yeah? So if you remember, like in the list of stuff, you have item area, item count, item length, and the part depth, yeah? So how do I come up with volume? So the volume in here I come up is like, so I know maybe this one is gonna be measured at the end as a pretty much like an assign it, you know, maybe to a specific item and take, you know, like that one. And this volume, it's a custom user defined parameters. Yes, yeah? so for this stuff, you know, rather than, you know, you know, getting the volume, cause you know, it's hard to get the volume from, from an item. I can define that one as a parameter. So I go here in parameters, you can see if I have a volume defined and it's a value of one. So right in here, I can go, for this one, it's like, okay, maybe 4,000 cubic yards of some, you know, of stuff. There are some of, of these ones you're gonna see that uses, uh, let's say it's item area multiplied, so this is in cubic yards. So it's item area multiplied by the depth divided by 27, yeah? So this one is amazing cubic yards. Now the depth, this one, it's a custom item, yeah? So it's a custom parameters. So in here, if I go to parameters, if I have to use, you know, this, uh, let's say this item, Let's just say that you know the top soil in here, the class C top soil uses a you know, if you don't use it as a volume itself, if you want to you know, you know calculate the volume for it, you're gonna be the item area. So you're gonna figure out you know the square feet, you know, pretty much of you know of the the enclosure, multiplied by custom parameter with the depth and then divided by 27, and that gives you the QB cards. Now the depth in here, let's say you assume that you have six inches. So if you go, if you go over six inches of topsoil for this type of item, you're gonna come in here, let's say the parameters, and in here for the depth, you're gonna type in what? You're not gonna type six inches because everything gets in feet. So you have to type 0 0.5 feet. And by doing so, you just measure the area. And then for the quantity, you're gonna get at the end, the QB cards, you know, pretty much the software gonna make the calculation for you. Now, this one, any questions up to here? Did I cover well enough? or too fast? Adam, so good? I'm gonna ask There was you. one question in the chat. Oh. Okay, um, I don't see the chat in here. Jacob asked, are the units defined by the drawing units or the unit type column? And what happens if they differ? No, so, so, the, so the units, you know, I mean, like the units, but you see, it's just a piece of text and you know, I can type, you know, gallons, you know, so they do not, they do not connect in any way, shape or form with the cat file, you know, so what matters at the end in here is pretty much what, you, what how you get your formula in here, yeah. So the cubic cards, if I say cubic cards, you know, as you're going to see, but, you know, in here it's like, I could have said it here as a CY, what is that? Divided by 27 or, for example, here, the, the tons, you know, how to get the tons, yeah. So it's a ton, how are you gonna get, you know, it's an item area divided by the depth or multiplied by the depth, multiplied by the density. And we have to get, you know, the values for the density divided by 2000 and this is how you get the tons, yeah. Now those parameters, you have to define them in the custom one, but this one, you're not gonna get the tons out of the cat file because, you know, the cat file doesn't have any way to shape or form to give you tons, you know, for value. So because the tons, there's some items, you know, pretty much everything that, you know, matters, it's in the formula. And here's we can put, you know, whatever you want to set as long as it's the right unit, you know. So in here, if it says like if here you have, you know, square yards, but you have to have square feet, you know, you have to make sure that this stuff in here, knowing that the software uses the square feet, you know, you're gonna reflect, you know, what you you know what is showing in the unit type. Yeah. So you the unit type is just a generic, comes from the CSV file. It doesn't in any way, shape, or form connect to the, you know, to the CAD file. Yeah. So yeah, so the for me, I used to convert the drawing units to the unit type. Yeah, that's true from that one. Right, you could you could effectively have like widgets, right? Unit type could be uh, Justins. How many Justins do we need? Yes, yes, yes. So that kind of stuff, you start took forever to get it done. Yeah, I mean- I've got a question for you, Ish, and yeah. this is something I ran into as well. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the city of Austin specification, let's say it's for concrete RCP pipe. Yeah. Um, the, 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 you have one pay item that covers every size of pipe. Yeah. And and realistically, you probably don't want that, right? Because you're going to want to yeah. assign a, a part yeah. to. So, Vez, I guess 
yeah, there might be a 500 series of pipes. I forgot which pipes, but the inlets, concrete cap. Uh, I can look. I think it's 508 or 503. Five, or you know, right? I guess it was 508. 508, 508 uh, I'm not sure. Easy. I'm looking. Like anyway, manholes are 506. Yes. But this like, is 508. Yeah, so so that's why I tell like you know, so that's why I tell people like you know, do not use the standard one because for me the standard is a good start from you know. So right here, if you look for a head walls type, you know, underscore underscore inch diameter pipe, you know. So this one, yeah, it's five eight, you know, s that age. But from this one, you can come up, you know, you have to go to the CSB file and add another line for whatever stuff, you know, and then you have to add, you know, make your own formula. So that's like you know, this QTO, it's a good start, you know, it gives you the start, something to start with. But you know the way it applies to the project, you know you manage it, you know afterwards. So I'm gonna uh -huh. give you like the stuff, you know, but you're gonna add, you know, stuff to your CSV or subtract. But at least you know I got you know all that data already there. Are Are you using a categorization file at all? The XML yes. file? Yes, yeah. So what I did like, you know, so when I select about categorization file, I select, you know, so you have like you know PRM file, you have a formula file, and the last one is the categorization file. And which I typically I select. Once you have opened the parent file, the second one you should open the formula file because by by then if you open the category file, it's gonna point you to the same location where you open the formula file from. If you do it the other way around the stuff, you have to go and browse from documents to the location of your, you know, where's the category file. Now the category file, it's a XML file in here. This is the category file, it takes forever to write, and I was almost like pulling my hair because you know the city has so many like categories and this stuff. But you know, if I go in here, I'm gonna look at you know a notepad to it. You know, it's pretty much is a XML. It's standard. You know, it's pretty much is the start value 100, and then you have to go for each of these ones, 101, 102, and so on. And pretty much, I look at the city's published uh, standard specifications, and I took those ones and I put them in here. Yeah. And by doing so, pretty much at the end, you're gonna see that you know I have some categorization that were there before, but they're not used anymore. But I still keep them in there, and because I, because I, you know. Uh, commented them out. I still have them having rather, but you know, I can re enable them at any time, you know, in the future. So this one available, you know, if you want to use it, you know, for you know to define for your own, let's say, you know, firm or some kind of stuff, you get every stuff in here and make it, you know, mess with it, you know, and modify it to fit your needs, you know. So I, I don't care about it, you know, it's you know, it's just a, a, a sample to use for. So if you think about categorization file, as I said before, here you're gonna have everything available in here in in, in pretty much all the list. Of course, you can take some of the items in here, add to the favorites if you want some of it to be in your favorites, you know, stuff. Now I'm going to go here to open category file. And when I open the category file, I'm going to finish, it's going to take me to the same location where I opened the, the um, I forgot, you know, the formula file form. Yeah. So I'm going to come in here, open that file. Hopefully it's not open in Notepad because otherwise sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't work the right way. So I'm going to come in here. And there you go. You're going to have it, you know, the categorization file. See the Boston beat items. And it gives you everything in here. You can expand, expand, and it's all there. Yeah. So if you want to work with this stuff, however, you're gonna see everything here. I have some uncategorized, you know. So these items, they're part of the side, you know, they're part of the beer item list, but they do not have a serial bus and standard specification. Or maybe my list might be outdated. You know, maybe they remove this stuff, you know, from the list, and you know, because of that one, you know, they do not show. Yeah. So. Because every time, if you look at this stuff, it's okay. But I'm categorized, you know, so that kind of triggers the question is, uh, are these ones removed or they're still there, but we don't have a standard specification. So it's good, you know, to have this categorized to see like what didn't match or what didn't fit, you know, in the, you know, in the categorization file. Now, so we got this, as I said, the pattern file, you have the formula file, and then you have the categorization file. Yeah, the only one that, you know, I'd say like you can modify and edit out. I mean, you have to edit outside, but you have to mess with it outside, it'll be the categorization file because there's no other place to make the time work. So the pattern file, you're gonna edit in, you know, Excel. The categorization file, you're gonna edit in, you know, pretty much in Notepad. And then the formula file, you could edit it in Notepad++ plus plus or in any XML editor, but it'll take you forever because you're gonna see that you know each of those uh, custom parameters that you know grouped together with your pay item. Yeah. So if I added you know a custom parameter in here, I forgot where it is in that one. I don't see. Okay, 400 right in here. Driver pass them. Yeah, right here. So this custom parameter, the depth one stuff. So this one's by not parameters defined overall, there are parameters that are defined individual for each of the pay items. Yeah. So I have this depth, you know, defined like, you know, you know, maybe like in 20, 30 times in the whole formula file, yeah? It's not like, you know, I define it once the depth and then I can go in the drop down here in the menu, it's like, you know, depth. Yeah, I can see it in here because I define it for this specific item. 
if I go to the next one, you're gonna see that in here or the, the, the volume in here, you're gonna see that I do not have those ones unless I have it. You see, I don't have the depth, yeah. So for each pay item that you have to do, add your custom parameters that helps you in the calculations, you have to add those ones individually to, you know, to the, you know, to the pay item. And to do that one, it's easy. You're gonna go to here, you're gonna go to the volume. In the firm, I can say the parameters and here on the plus and, you know, add, you know, give the name and, you know, let's like, let's say a test. And better I'm gonna say here, like say test one, click okay. And I'm gonna see that in the list I have the test parameters, yeah. But otherwise, that's nothing to, you know, to to play with that one. So save as, you can take, you know, your parent file, you can save it as a takeout catalog, if so, or CSV file. If you want to save another CSV file, I never use all of this takeout catalog, but you know, it's there, so. Now, uh, when it comes about measuring, okay, measuring. So pretty much, you know, this is the category, this is the stuff in here where you load the data, but you know, a science in here, you can turn on the categorization file on and off if you have to, but otherwise I'll leave it on. You can filter in here, you can just say like, you know, maybe like mulch, like this, and it's like, you know, find the mulch suck if you have the mulch suck, but it looks like, you know, I don't know how it works on that one. So I'm gonna leave it on forever. And I want to see everything. But in here, what I'm looking for, it's, you know, this bottom line, it's just assign the selected parent to an object in the drawing. The next one, it will be like in here, assign the parents to a closed area. You can have like delete the same one, remove the parent from a specified object. And then you can say edit, parent, edit the parents on the specified objects once you're a sub -em. And then you have here, you have the execute the takeoff command. And then right in here, pretty much it gives you a way to highlight the data. So here, highlight, highlight the objects of the this pair atom. So if I have assigned a pair atom to an object, I can, you, by using the highlight objects of pair atom, when I say the pair atom, you're gonna highlight all the objects that pair atom it's you know, assigned to. And then in here at the end, you're gonna have, uh, I don't know, edit command settings. You can go for this stuff. I mean, you can define like which is the default report. And so, you know, when you run the takeout command. But let's go in here and look at, you know, maybe a little bit of assignments of stuff. Now my city of Austin here, template that I have, you know, it always starts from the capital. Pretty much, you know, you have like the circle in here. So I know that when I go to the geolocation, I'm trying to hit the map aerial, you're gonna point me right to the capital. I'm gonna turn it on. So I have a little bit, you know, an idea of like, you know, visual, like uh, linear when it comes about like, you know, measuring. So there you go. So I'm gonna focus maybe in the area of the capital in here. And I'm gonna start pretty much just defining some items, yeah. So let's say I can define here, for, you know, concrete curb and gutter. And the one I'm looking for is the concrete for structure. I forgot which one it is. Not that one, or oh, who are you? I'm trying to find in here, PC cargo, but it's 430, yeah? So right here, you're gonna see that I have the 430 SA, I guess, you know, one of those ones, excavation of the 430 SB. Okay, so I'm gonna define in here, maybe like the landmark for curb and gutter. So I'm gonna go here to the layer manager. I'm gonna come and, now this one is gonna be like too much in here to show. So I'm gonna come here to the C features. I'm gonna take this, stuff in here a little bit so I can see more stuff. I'm gonna be curb line. See, 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 see curb line right there, make it current. And I'm gonna start, you know, pretty much, you know, doing a polyline here. I'm gonna measure a couple of curb in here. Just, you know, for a note, you know, it's like, you know, there's my curb. Like there, there you go, there's my curb. Now I'm gonna make maybe another curb in here. And this is just, you know, do not, you know, do not look at my stuff, you know, just, you know, you know, for the quantity's purposes, yeah. I'm doing the stuff in here. So to assign, you know, this pay item to this stuff, you're gonna see that, you know, when a pay item is assigned to the object, you know, it could be assigned in here as a tooltip, you know, on the bottom. So when I go on top of the pile, you're gonna see, you should see a pay item. If you don't see it, it means there's no pay item assigned to that object, yeah. So to assign, you know, like say the 430 SB to this, you know, object, I'm gonna come in here to 430 SB and say assign pay item, and I'm gonna assign it to this object. Right there, and on the bottom it says pay item, 438 SB assigned to the object, right click. And you're gonna see that in here, if I go on my, put my two tip on the top, it says the, this object also has a pay item assigned to it, yeah. Now this object has a pay item to this side of this stuff, while this one doesn't have all this stuff, yeah. Now there's no way, I guess at this moment, there's no way in still 3D or, you know, or CAD, you know, to match properties from one to another or do an as selected. And I guess I tried that one before. Let's say I want to make another object the same way as this stuff. If I come in here and say an as selected, you're gonna see that pretty much, you know, the data, you know, the extra pay item doesn't, doesn't go to it, you know? So it doesn't, let me go in here, you're gonna see that it doesn't 
uh, the data doesn't pass from one object to the other. Yeah, you, I can add in an object of the same type, you know, but the B item, the, the B item data doesn't go from one object to another. Yeah. So because of that one is like, you know, pretty much, you know, you have to make sure that you assign the pay items, you know, to the, you know, to the object, you know, individually. Now in here, if I come in here, I'm gonna say like, you're gonna see in the objects in here, in the up, in the up options, you're gonna see you have, you know, an option here to select the objects with the same with this pay item, you know, and this is a way, easy way, way for you to see which objects they have that pay item assigned to them. You know? So if I come in here, if I select objects, you can see that it selects only one, yeah. Now I can come in here and do the same stuff, pretty much I can select multiple in here. Let me come in here and I'm gonna assign this pay item to them. And now I have like pay objects, that one. And if I come in here, I'm gonna say like, you know, select that with this pay item, you're gonna select all those three polygons, yeah. If you remember a while back, I said just, you know, you know, you have a way to highlight stuff, it's not necessarily highlight. So I'm gonna say highlight objects with pay items. So I'm gonna come in here. You're gonna see in here says highlight objects with pay items, it means highlights all the objects with pay items. The second one highlight objects without pay items, you know, it gives the, the inverse of that one. And then here one option highlight objects with selected pay items. Yeah, so that's typically what I would use in here. I can come in here, so if I come in here and select this one, it should give you a highlight on that one, but looks like it doesn't give you. I don't know why. Maybe I'm coming to map off. Maybe I'm gonna make some other stuff and assign another pay item to it, polyline. And they're coming here. Now this one, oh, it looks like it's a highlight because you know, because this is the color for it, yeah. So this, this is the color of the layer and the highlight of that one. So I'm gonna come in here and uh, Let's go in, change the stuff, highlight objects without a pay item. You're gonna see that, you know, that's the object, you know, without a pay item, yeah. I was expecting the highlights to be like one of those like blue, you know, highlight around the object. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, besides the color, you have a blue highlight around it, but it looks like, you know, only the object gets a little bit more, let's say just the color makes it a little bit more brighter, you know, to show it's selected them. Yeah. Now, an ab like an object, you have multiple pay items assigned to them, you know, so you can actually sometimes quantify this, you know, double, so let's say if I want you know, this stuff to be like, you see a curb and gutter, you know, like for fine grading and also consider for excavation, like, you know, so for in here, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, let's say I'm using proposed curb gutter and then I'm gonna use it also for excavation. I can say, you know, two different pay items to the same object, you know, so I'm gonna say in here, I'm gonna say assign pay item. If I come to this one, you know, see that if I go on top of this one, this one has two pay items assigned to them, yeah. Now, of course, you know, if I come in here, I'm gonna say, you know, highlight. Let's go in here, highlight objects with selected pay items. You can see that, you know, if I come to this one, it selects only that one. However, I go to the next one. Let's see, where's the stuff? Did I make the right stuff in here? With selected pay item. It should. And, and I don't know why it does, you know, it doesn't need the other ones. Maybe sometimes you do a refresh. So it selects that one. It should be like that one selected, but sometimes it looks like it doesn't like that one. Clear highlight, let's go in here, highlight with selected pay items. Looks like now it works, you know. So I typically, I do not use that one, I just use the select, you know, pay, I'm just the same pay item, so I can see visually versus, you know, the highlight, because it looks like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm gonna just stick with the, do not use the highlight on that one. Now, um, to remove to remove a pay item from, from an object, it's easy, you're gonna come in here to this one. You're gonna say here, edit the pay items, you know, for example, yeah, if you want to re fully remove the data, you can just remove parents from the specified objects and this one I'm gonna remove, you know, like uh, let's say the parent from this object, rather. Now I'm gonna see that, you know, it does, you know, fully, you know, removing from that one. If you want to edit, you know, the list of parents from an object, you can come to this one and say edit parents on a specific object. And I'm gonna come to this one. You're gonna see that now I have both of them. I'm gonna come in here and say, okay, I don't want to use, you know, the excavation. So I'm gonna come in here and X out of that one and you're back to that item having only one pay item. Now, uh, I'm gonna define maybe another area here. Let's see, maybe we're gonna define in here an area that has like a square feet. Which one is the sidewalk? I forgot where is the sidewalk. Concrete structures, 413, uh, 402, I guess somewhere in here. Okay, right in here, PC concrete sidewalks. Now the sidewalk is measured, you know, in, you know, pretty much, you know, in square feet, you know, so I'm gonna come here to the properties. I'm gonna change my layer in, in here to sidewalk. See sidewalk, I'm gonna have the sidewalk, 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 sidewalk line. And I'm gonna do a sidewalk and typically, you know, for that, I'm gonna do here a line. 
And I'm gonna come like here with my SAVAC and I'm gonna make it like this. So I'm gonna say closed driver. Now to be stuff, you know, for the SAWAC, I'm gonna come and assign the item to an area. Now let's see, this is the one or it should be like stuff. You see like, you know, so it, it, to assign to an area, it should be to an item, you know, so if you want to put like a hatch inside of the area, you're gonna say assign pay item to the area. However, if you want to do like, you know, to the, um, the, the object, you're gonna say pay item, select in here the pay item, the, the SAWAC, and there you go, I have the, you know, the pay item for this stuff set up, yeah. Now, this is pretty much, you know, everything that you have, like, your sign pay items to objects and so on. And then at the end, once you have all this data together, you're going to run a report. Yeah, the report is pretty much as accurate as the time it's run, you know. It's not like, you know, it's not like a dynamic report. As far as I know, it's just a one time in, in, in space. You run the report, you're going to get the quantities, and you can export it out to, you know, to whatever you want to do. So to run the report, you know, it's either run it in here, you know, to run it from the execute takeoff command. However, you know, or you can use from analyze, you can run the takeoff is the same command. So the fast one is from here, execute the takeoff command. Now on, when, when you run the execute the takeoff command, it can ask you, you know, the report type, it's a summary or a detail, yeah. So you can, I don't go into detail about this one, you know, it's, it, it looks like uh, we can run, you know, either of them and see which one where. But, you know, the report extends, you're gonna see that, you know, you can focus the whole drawing to a sheet or a selection set, yeah. So if you want to be specific to a specific area, you're gonna use a selection set. To a sheet, you know, if you want to, you know, sheet specific, otherwise, you know, to the drawing that means the model space of the CAD file. Limits extend to alignment station range. You can assign it to, like, for example, to limits, you know, the calculations based on alignment, start station and station, or report selected pay items only. And you're going to find in here, report output, you know, you can come in here. But if you can run here, I'm going to run it as a summary and I say compute. And you're gonna find, you know, the report, the default, you know, the first type of report, you're gonna see here, this is the format of the report, is transport designer interface, XSL. Now this one is not something that visual looks appealing. So you're gonna come in here and look for something that looks like better, you know? So go in the drop down and find the one that fits your needs, yeah? So you're gonna find that this one, is, it looks like, you know, you have to pay items for these B and A, and it gives you like, you know, the, the description of how many square feet on the stuff. Now, I guess this one maybe looks a little bit better, you know, by using the stuff. So you have the data from here. And this one, it's as accurate, as I say, at the time you run the report, it's not dynamic. There's no way to put it like the same as, uh, like a silk media table somehow in the model space. And, you know, as soon as you add stuff to it, you know, you're gonna update that data, yeah? So you have to run this report all the time, yeah? Now this report, you're gonna come in here, you can draw it, you know, you can put it, you know, pretty much it's a one time in the in stuff, you know, it gives you driver. Or you can save it as, you know, so if you save it as, it's gonna give you like, you know, an option to save it, you know, it looks like an HTML file, yeah. And if I come in here, do I have any other options in here? Looks like this stuff, save as, saves you as a text file, yeah, a summary. And then if you be like this stuff, it looks like more like gibberish. So I would not deal with stuff. So pretty much I would look in here, maybe summary, in, you know, to this ones. Now let's see, let's go and see if we can run a detail and see what's the difference with this stuff. I'm gonna say compute. And the detail, you have a little bit more detailed stuff, you know, and I didn't get too much in here to look at because typically I don't run summaries, but um, let me see in here. Formula gives you like station offset, so pretty much you know, if you use like an alignment and so on, you're gonna get you know, more info than just a summary. Detail count, detail linear, so you can see that, you know, it's based on areas, it, it takes all the area data, so it's, it takes, you know, when it says about details, it takes the data and splits it based on type of, you know, like measurements, be a linear, it'd be like an area, it'd be a count and sort of volume, yeah. So right here, I'm gonna come a detail, for example, linear. This one, it says it's in square feet, so it takes the area. If I go here, detail linear, in this one, it takes, you know, everything that's measured as linear, yeah. So you have the two of them, and it gives you here, like, you know, formula, it's item length and so on. But typically, what you're gonna run here, you're gonna always, you know, typically gonna run a, it's a summary, that's why I typically run by default and just compute and get the data and you're good to go on that one. So that's pretty much all there is on, all there is on, uh, on uh, using uh, QTO as, as far as I know, as, you know, as far as we, we get to use, you know, to use it for what we do. So um, did I cover everything there? Did I miss anything? I don't know. No, that was a lot of information. So you just crammed in there. 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, the data is when if anybody wants, you know, access to the, you know, this data, you know, I can, you know, send it, you know, send it over, put it somewhere on the website and people get access to it and stuff, or even put it on Discord as a package, you know, and it's a, it's a good start, you know, you know, get to start from, you know, it's like, hey, this is what it looks like in here. So rather than recreating the wheel and try to figure out, you know, what the CSV file should look at or better stuff. So the one, the most important ones would be, as I said before, the pay item file and the um, category file, the formula file you still have to create it, yeah? But at least you can start from that formula file and maybe I can give you like an empty one, but once it's loaded, once you have the formulas, you know, it's easy to manage and stuff. It looks like it has to be, have a specific format. So if I like look at this one to the formula, I'm gonna see that it's also XML file kind of stuff. You know, it starts with formulas, properties, company, Autodesk. So it looks like this was started from an Autodesk this is sample and it was added to it. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, take a text file that we should do actually at the beginning and save it as a FOR and it's, you know, who writes out of the box. Yeah. So pretty much I have to come in here and remove all this data in here, pretty much um, uh, film or filter this, this file, you know, to make it look better. So I can remove everything, all the other content that I don't need. Yeah. So, but that's always pretty much it, you know, three files, you know, two needed, one, optional the categorization but uh, otherwise or well, the other thing is like you know i guess i have to maybe to mention is that when you use the qto typically what happens you know if everybody's familiar with those red apps yeah the red apps you know the qto is the red apps added to your cat file so if you do your if you do your your you know i guess your typical purge reg, reg apps and stuff then pretty much you're going to purge back connection of this you know qto to your cat file yeah so uh, yeah, typically I hate, you know, the red apps and I found, you know, and those typically come sometimes from consultants, they come somewhere from people that do not know about them existing. And I found files that have like, you know, hundreds of thousands of red jobs out of them. And that's, you know, stores on your machine and stuff. But typically if you look at the, the typical standard file, like, you know, just a name, like a template, you know, I don't think you have more than a hundred or so, you know, in just a standard one. But yeah, so as I said, the QTO gets attached or gets, you know, like a virus on the, on the, on the cat file. It gets attached to the cat file, you know, via the red, red jobs, yeah. Just the FYI for some people. So but, I have a question. The, yeah. what, this seems to get you a report um, of, the, of the items in your drawing. And yeah. I, I suppose what you do after that is to have, have somebody then assign the actual costs to all of your pay items with a separate I mean, file or? Yes, you know, so you could make connections like maybe like, you know, a join relates and stuff, you know, pretty much if you find the same item, you know, in a database, you can connect that one, you know, and by using the same items like as a join, pretty much you can get okay. that one and make the stuff or you can do Excel spreadsheets and stuff, make, you know, make them work. Like, okay. you know, look up this value and find that one and do that kind of calculation it gives you at the end. The idea is like in here, you have you have this uh, what's called you have these file formats like you know the 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 report templates. Now those ones, you know, it's not like you know they're the only ones. You can custom build other ones, you know. So pretty much, you know, if you want, you know, maybe one that spits spits the stuff out, and some that you know in specific file, file format for Excel, then you I bet you know you could do that one too. You know, to speak of that one, you just have to dive into how to generate those XSL files, you know, that generate the reports, you know, because you have the so same stuff. Yeah. So, so say I have, say I have, I'm a, I have multiple, um, I don't know, clients or customers. I mm -hmm. can use a, a, um, a file to categorize all of my pay items, but then, but then you, I, I would use a separate categorization file be, so, so that I can use, I can make the items in my drawing a standard um, pay item, but then have the category, categorization file separate what those items are per customers or clients um, it, specifications yeah. yeah sometimes you could do that i mean like you know the things like you know i always look in here at the start you know so when i look in here it's like you know the software requires a pay item id you know so bet on whether it's a city whatever define id or a text that i define id or whatever your own digit numbers zero zero one zero zero two and so on the software is looking for button, so you have to you need the column column for better. I mean, you need the description and then you need the unit type for better. Yeah, so okay. you can define those items. You know, it doesn't have to be like this stuff, it can be like, you know, okay, I want to be just a generic that I typically use for you know any design, like you know, and you make it for your clients. 
like, you know, okay, so what the client wants, you know, sidewalk, because you don't have to be like so detailed, like the way it's right here. So the client, you know, if you do landscape, you know, no land development, you're gonna do a sidewalk, curb, what else? You know, pretty much just, just you know, it would be maybe at least of maybe 50 items, you know, and Bitcoin can be generic, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, to be 610, yeah. It, but those ones, can, can I interject yeah. for a second? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna tell you how I've used QTO, and this is just to give you a different perspective. Um, and I used it actively in my firm for, for the entire length that we were in business. And then we rolled it over to a firm that bought us because they didn't have it set up. Um, I, I had some issues with it, to be honest. And the concerns that I specifically had was what Ish was showing, that there's all these phantom connections, right? That you don't know whether a pay item was assigned or not. And you're spending a lot of time doing that, which I think is one of its inherent fallacies. But I'll tell you where its great benefit is. If you set up a, a, a QTO list for every item that is in your predefined pipe network, Every yeah. manhole, every pipe, every box culvert, every gate valve, every uh, manhole of variable size, and you do all of that, and you do it right, then you can do a quantity takeoff of all your pipe networks really, really fast. So to the point where we just weren't even having uh, our CAD techs doing QTO on the pipe network itself. Now, there's a couple of problems with that that you need to understand. Um, I'll back up. I would only assign QTO to anything that was part of a pipe network. I wouldn't do pavement. I wouldn't do any linear features, no sidewalks, none of that stuff. You can, but I didn't want my staff having to manage what was attached and what was detached because that's, but when it comes to pipe networks, if you delete a part, it's going to remove it, right? And if you add a part and you have to set up all that QTO before you ever lay out any part of the entire network, you can't do it after the fact, but if you do that, you'll have it really fast. Now, here's one of the problems. If you get into Civil 3D, there's a little glyph. Sometimes you can grab that glyph and make the pipe bigger and smaller based upon the network, right? Like I can clip it and say, I want, no, it's an 18, I want a 24, I want a 36. If you do that, it will not update the QTO. Oh, wow. So you, you have to always, always, always swap the part. Right. Always swap the part. Because if you swap the part and these, he's showing you this QTO pay items, like effectively yeah. if you picked one. So every part in a in the pipe, every part in the pipe list needs a unique pay item. And that's kind of where I was getting back with Ish that yeah. I'll need a pay item for a 48 inch, I'll need a pay item for a 60, I'll need a pay item for a 72, I'll need a pay item for an 84, I'll need a pay item for a 96. If you do that and you set it all up on the front end, then doing quantity takeoffs is really easy. And you're going, well, how would I do that? The way that we did it is that I, we would create a brand new drawing um, that, and we would bring in the data reference in the pipe network and then just do a quantity takeoff of the pipe network itself. So I'd have one for storm, one for water, one for wastewater, and it would very quickly, succinctly tell me this is, you have 17 manholes, this many linear feet of eight inch pipe, this many linear feet of 10 foot pipe. It's not going to tell you the variation in depth. Don't even chase that. That's a nightmare. I don't like formulas because the formulas could be broken. And I don't like assigning a pay item unless it's a uh, specific civil 3D object. Kind of think about Revit, right? Revit's got a door and a door's got a price, right? Um, it's got uh, a window and a window's got a price. Anything that's a civil 3D object, not a surface, but like a part on a part list, a part on a part list should always have a pay item assigned. If you're in a company that doesn't have that set up, I think you're doing it wrong and you're probably slowing yourself down. Yeah. Um, I do have, I'm looking at my QT, my CSV and XML file. And all it is, is like 48 inch pipe. Uh, it's, it's, it's got 18 inch RCP, 18 inch HPE. My numbers are, I can kind of tell you, they, they mimic yours ish. Um, hold on. I'm pulling it up. It's, uh, 0508 space 0085, which is a 36 inch sloped head wall. And then I've got an 0508 0086, which is a 48 inch sloped head wall. So you have to create all these pay items for every iteration on your part list. And that seems tedious, but once you have it set up, it, it pays for itself. Sounds I mean, as tedious a as a pipe network. Say that um, again. Sounds as tedious as creating a pipe network from scratch. It is. It yeah. is. I mean, so like if you, every box culvert, every iteration of every box culvert, I have a pay item for, and I have a matching part for it. 
yeah. you know, a nine by six, an eight by six, a four by four, a six by four, a four by six. You know, it's it's awful. Um, my pay item for just my my pipes is three hundred and seventy four items. <laughs> Right, because that's how many parts I have between water, yeah. wastewater, and storm. Yeah, yeah, I see. You know, yeah, I see that five ten AR. This one gives you the pipe underscore diameter underscore type. But it does, yeah, it, it doesn't give you the size. So this one you have to take it and make it five ten AR zero zero one AR whatever. So or whatever you come up with, you know, let's say if you say like twelve inch AR zero zero twelve or whatever stuff, you know. And it, it, you come with one, pretty much if you define each of those individual pay items. You know? if, if you set that up, I guarantee it will pay for itself. That will be time well spent if you set so you, it up. So you recommend just having this on pipe networks, but I... That's, so, what, that's, what, that's all I've ever done because I don't trust that I'm going to be able to cleanly figure out what's tagged and what's not tagged because you're yes. adding another dimension. When he was tagging that curb, he was yeah. dropping that part. And I don't think Civil 3D very well shows you what is and what isn't. And now you're managing like this hidden variable that's maybe attached, maybe not attached. But for pipes, for parts, if you set this up before you ever lay out your part, your pipe network, it's always going to be there, right? Yeah. You'll always have that pay item for that manhole, that 48 inch sanitary yeah. sewer manhole will always have that attached to it. And you yeah, delete because, the object or you add one, it's going to instantiate it. Yes, because when you create when you create an object, it adds the pay item to the object right away when you create it, you know, versus like, that's why I was trying to figure out, you know, is there any way, like, if I do add selected to copy the the object of the pay item, you know, attached it already, you know, so there's no, so yeah, so there's no way, like, if I say, like, okay, draw, like, you know, if, that's as I can, if they would have made it, like, you know, where, let's say I would have gone in here, say, like, uh, maybe, like, uh, I'm looking for linear feet, something like this stuff. But going right here, it's so like, you know, create object. Right. Or body line. Then it'd right. be better. Because it'd be I way better. Yeah. But I have to do it after the fact. So I'm like, uh, try to track that one. So unless you have somebody that's very good at uh, making sure that the science right. stuff. Or, so or like have, when we're doing quantities for silt fence, I'm just going to grab all the poly lines and figure out the length total and be done. Right. Yeah. Instead of instead of tagging each poly line of the silt fence with the silt fence pay item, which is just a, it's tedious. Right. But for pipes, it's the opposite, because you're going to always create the pipe from a part network, and, uh, right? Yeah. You're always going to do that. And uh, another way to make it work for this stuff, you know, since you said like this stuff, you know, yes, we have like, you know, say I select, you know, I select all this stuff similar at the end, maybe at the end of my, at the end of my stuff, I can select here, come in here, select similar. So select similar this stuff, of course, you know, you can run, you know, like a, let's say a routine, it says like, you know, T length, for example, for us, you know, it's like total length. I give a number, right. I put it down and stuff forward. Yeah. You know, That's if, you the, if you can't use the QTO, you can select, you know, here at the end of, let's say, once you, let's say, when you, once you're ready to get the quantities, you can say here, select similar, select all of them, and then come in here, say, assign pay item. And by doing so pretty much, at the end of this, the my design, I assign the pay items versus along the project. So, it, Adam, Justin, are you using this at all? Are you doing QTO corporately? No. We are. <clears throat> You use it for everything, yeah. even pavement off of corridors? So no, we use it for yeah. pipe networks, but I've got a uh, quantity script that will take areas and linear feet of layers in Dynamo and quantify it. So I'm moving from QTO for the pipe networks and put it in Dynamo. And then Find all poly lines on this layer, that's a silk fence. Yep. Okay, got it. Exactly. <laughs> that's clever. Yeah, and, and for Cordy, like this, the corridor stuff is the same like the, I guess the Pi Networks, you have to assign the stuff before you actually build a corridor <laughs> and stuff. And, and, and typically that one is just, you know, it's what is the, because you know, the corridors use the average and area. Well. So pretty much you're going to just take in the area of that area. So you have to define the way the software takes that one and, you know, make sure that, you know, the formula matches what the software is doing. Well. So the, the software, like, you know, when it gets, you know, the quantities for like a base, you know, it's looking for the base, looking for an area, yeah? So it's not looking for like a volume. It takes the area and then it generates it at the end, you know, I guess it gets to the dead end. But yeah, typically I do not mess with stuff because anyway, it's like, unless you're very good at sub-assembly composer to build those sub-assemblies up to the best stuff, you know, to get the it's quantities. It's tough, it's really most hard. People, yeah, most of the people, they just, uh, okay, close enough, plus 10%, minus 10% is good, so. <laughs> It's tough. Tom, you had some experience many, many years ago. I thought there was an old rumor that Autodesk, when you do a corridor, like it was doing the QTO on one side of the road, but it wasn't doing the other. 
Like if you mirrored a template or something, they would get confused. I'm assuming that's all been solved, but I, I don't know if anybody's got any experience with that. Uh, me personally, I don't have any experience with that, but I can see where that, that could have happened. Uh, in, in terms of where you assign the pay items, they're going to be in the code set style. I do know that much. You can yeah. assign the pay items to uh, links and points. Yes. I, I can't stand up and say that I've had any experience assigning pay items to a corridor. And I've only heard many, many years ago, I heard a rumor from somebody that it was it was buggy. And I, I cannot attest to that. Yeah. So the point, yeah. the shape. So the shape would give you the volume. The, yeah. No, the there's no pay would, item for that. No, there's no pay item for the shape. Oh, no. boo. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. So um, yeah. Link would give you the so the point would give you. I can't even do that in my head. That would be the linear length of a feature. So what does the link give you? The area. I would guess so because the area. Yeah. Yeah, I think link would give you area and point would give you linear. So it's, you add a dimension. I get it. So point gives you link. Link link gives you area, and then shape would theoretically give you volume, but it just doesn't have a pay item for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you would just take your link value and assign a depth or yeah, a cross-sectional area or mm -hmm. something yeah, yeah but that's, imagine, a, that's a pain in the ass yeah <laughs> imagine if your quantities has to be done in like say in let's say tons so like okay ho, ho, hold done. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to make it work in here so yeah so the general consensus that i'm understanding is qto is great in theory but there's easier ways to make sure it's done right it's a lot of maintenance TDs. it's a lot of yeah it, it's a lot of maintenance i don't just i don't know if you're on the same page with that or not is there you know? is there not a way to just have when you draw a polyline in this layer have that polyline assigned the, no that's the, that's what justin was saying he was writing dynamo to do programmatically after the fact oh, um, after the fact well or just any anything on this layer that's of this type of object is a X, Y is, is something. Yeah, it's, Am I getting that right, Justin? You are. So, you know, you can say you have a sidewalk and it has hatching. You can take that hatch and abstract an area out of it and quantify all that. So, but, you, but there's no QTO attached to it. There's no pay item that he's per se. He's doing that a different way. Right. So I'm pulling the square area or square foot area of some hatching or linear feet of the flow line even the linear feet of the pavement marking, um, counting each block for the road signs, um, water structures, it's doing, you know, it's pulling that information. Even the edge of asphalt, I'm getting the square footage for this poly. So, um, and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 12 minutes. Yeah, it's probably pretty straightforward. Yeah. That, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, I, I think, Jacob, for your your first soiree, pick pick wastewater. Start easy, right? Pick wastewater and try to same pay, pay items to all your wastewater objects. Um, you don't even need to worry about the categorization file because you're not going to have that many parts, right? You're just going to have pipes and manholes and some cleanouts and a couple other things, and that'll grow and evolve as you realize, oh, I wish I had a this, right? I don't have a double headed cleanout. I've only got a, a single cleanout or some garbage like that, or you know. Um, something weird that just you hadn't thought of but do all your manholes do all your pipes and assign a pay item to it in your part list and then just run it and see what you get you know i, th I think if you do that you'll learn there is power behind this there's value behind it and, and then yeah. and then you'll go oh i wish i had storm and then i wish i had water and then you'll start doing what i did was like what if i did pavement what if i did uh, all these other linear features and then i realized we're going to miss something and I'm going to get sued, right? Because we're not going to tag the right item. So that was that was where I went, I, just from the liability side of it. I, I didn't trust that we were going to manage it well. Yeah, yeah, it seems it seems very, very tedious. And me being in survey, I, I, the only thing I can really can relate to is having my, my uh, what's it called? My legend automatically filled uh, because text, text can't keep track of what has been field to finish to versus versus well, imagine, imagine you create a part network a pipe network uh, this is going to sound really dumb but you create a pipe network that is um property corners and property boundaries 
the boundaries are lines, the property corners are, uh, are, are structures. You could very quickly figure out, okay, I've got 17 pins that I need to set and X number of linear feet oh, that wow. I have to, I mean, it, but it'd be a pipe network, right? You're kind of faking a parcel as a pipe network, which yeah. is kind of garish, ganky, but, but you could do that. Um, you could do the same thing with the fence, right? Where this many posts and this many linear feet of stockade fence, but it would be, it would be a, a pipe network. Like I only think the power is really cleanly leveraged when you've got a pipe network, but maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's where it's, it really shines. Cause then when you or add, if you took, yeah, but if you took like linear feet of a fence line and you know that every six feet, you're going to put a post then you can take that linear feet, you could. divide by six, and then that's going to be an estimate. Well, that, and that would be a formula buried in Ishka's mm -hmm. formula file. That would be a, Correct. another, if not better way. The problem with that is when you turn- Then you corners, have the corner posts. Not, yeah, yep. that's the problem, right? So that's a, that, that's a classic problem. That, that's the same thing with wastewater. When you go, oh, I've got wastewater from here to here, but every time you turn an angle, you also need a manhole. So it's, it's the same problem, but- uh, no, I think it's good. I, I think there's value in this. Don't, don't, don't interpret what I'm saying as a negative. I'm just telling you my experience specifically is, I think if your your template is always set up with the same part pipe networks, and all of those pipe networks are always linked to the same part list, whether that's you know a, a, mu, a mu, ours is a mutation of issues because I wanted a pay item for every size, but it's the same idea, right? And then at some point you'll get so many that it's kind of tedious and categorizations a pain in the ass. And then you'll have to learn how to write your XML categorization file, but it, it, you evolve that way. And then at some point you might want a formula file, but I could tell you in production, we use zero um, mainly because I didn't want people to have to rely that those were correct or, or that somebody went in there as Vish was saying and augmented it or mutated it. It's maybe a better term. So. Also, you need to make sure that if you are doing quantities, whether it's Dynamo or QTO, that that line work needs to be clean. You can't have oh, overlapping yeah. lines and things like that in the same layer because they're going to get pulled twice. That's You could have two pipes on top of each other uh, and it would count them twice. I mean, that's the, the thing that always worried me is that somebody was going to grab that glyph and change the size of the pipe and we were going to miss it. And then the contractor was going to come back and just crucify us on it you can do that so don't don't ever change the size always swap the part that's buried in this mastering civil 3d book it's like one little paragraph on one page <laughs> in the corner and if you don't see that if you don't run qto a lot you don't think about it until you well, run into it, the oh shit moment like why am i wrong well you so, also run into an issue of the description not updating so if you're using descriptions in your label it's still going to have the old description correct that's correct so there's there's two reasons not to <laughs> not yeah, to always swap the, the part Always yes. swap apart. And in yeah. fact, if you were to, let's say you had an existing pipe network in a drawing and then you came back and added the QTO to the yeah, no uh, parts list later. No, no, no. Hold on. If you use something like Steve's deal where you can grab all the pipes of this size and swap them, and you literally swap them back to themselves. True, true. It'll add the yeah, QTO that, to it. That's right. And that's it'll right. hold the description. But if you, it, it, the counterpoint to that is if you, don't have your part, your pipes working well with like hydroflow and you move it out and hydroflow changes it, back, changes it to the nearest matching size. Be careful of that too. Um, you have to make sure that that's all hardwired up too. I, I've seen that like it, it goes, oh, you allow a 33 inch pipe. I'm gonna change it to a 33 inch pipe and then it moves it back into like you round trip it back in and it airs out. So it, that that's that's for another conversation for another day, but there are, there's going to be little heartburns and hiccups that you just have to understand. And if you get to the point where you understand all that, then you've mastered it. Um, and it's not scary anymore. But the first time you get into QTO, I, I was a little nervous and I didn't trust it. And we checked many, many, many times. But after a while, we're just like, that's it's getting it. As long as we've got uh, every once in a while, your CAD administrator needs to go in and make sure there isn't some part that's been added that has no pay item attached to it. You might have. For example, like when, when we would do single clean outs and double clean outs for wastewater, we'd create a separate pipe network for it. And we would just drop a non-plottable um, double clean out or you know, double uh, wastewater service or single wastewater service. And we would count them that way, that they were just a, just a block, effectively a part that's dropped 
on this on the wastewater and the reason you do that is because you don't want to break the wastewater line at every service right because yeah. that's a pain in the ass um yeah. but those are those are just tricks it's, it's it's all using the stuff it showed it's just a trick that you're trying to figure out yeah. as you're you're laying stuff out i think it's good yeah and and, and maybe like you know like you know you're maybe gonna start a ton or maybe i'm gonna work on at least you know, starting you know update this part list with more sizes so we'll see like I said, I've got 400 and I'm just doing water, wastewater, and storm. And no, it's 400 like, pay items. It's like, there's the stuff I hate the most. It's like repetitive tasks. I'm like, I'm almost, it's like, no, no, I have to take a break after five minutes. Here, I'll show, I'll show you. Give me a second. Um, okay. Can you drop out? I'll show you my list just to scare the shit out of you. Uh, <laughs> but I'll give it to you. Like I said, now that I've sold the firm, I'm not, I'm not very guarded with this stuff anymore. Um, all right, so let's find the like. Con look at all these box culverts. You love that. There's from there to Holy there, geez. but we have a matching part in our storm network that has those pipes, right? We have a two by two. We have a two by four. We have a two by three. The the parts in the template are all there that match. Same thing with uh, this is a what is this wastewater pipe? Yeah, there. Yeah. And it's 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 using city of Austin spec on the front end. It's not using and, and I'm creating my own customs on the back end. And if you tell, there's kind of a logic to it. Yeah. But where it gets a where it gets a little weird is when you get to like RCP. So there's all the RCP and there is a logic to it. It's still a 510 pay item because it's pipe, but I have to create kind of my own numeric sequence. So one O is RCP and 12 is a 12 inch. That's my logic. That's you can make up your own. It doesn't matter. Right. It's just it's just a number, just a way to look things up. It doesn't doesn't really mean anything. Um, yeah. But then you change to HDPE. I assign it a different designation. So three O is HDPE. And again, everything in my part list has matches to one of these. So as you build them and there's a lot, you know, the description doesn't have to be hardcore, but, you know, three inch PVC and a 54 inch PVC still the same pay item but you want to categorize them by what they are. And then my, my uh, XML file is pretty basic. I'll show you what that is. It's nothing complicated. But the thing that I got hung up on was this right here. And that just says, when you categorize it, what numbers do you use as that can't whole see number? It. Oh. Andy, we only see oh. Excel. Really? Oh, because I shared, I didn't share the screen. Sorry, I'll do that again uh this guy how about now yep. yeah okay so it's this start number and end number and that's up to you like i think it defaults to three or maybe it's four i can't remember and that just says that everything that is that starts with 0503 put under this categorization and then everything that's 05 is just thrown in the whole group because I didn't go outside the 500s. It's just doing every one of the pay items. I, I stayed inside the 500s. That's the only difference between me and him. Um, and then we would usually change the date when it was last updated. So this hasn't been updated in eight years, uh, seven years, somewhere around there. But that's how long we've been using it and had no issues. Um, even FDC connections and reducers and backflow preventers, I mean, all that stuff is in there. Whatever's in the part network, is there let me see if i've got a cost opinion i did this with my acc guys too um and then we'd produce stuff like that you know which is really just get all this crap but some of it you won't have like there's no reason to do channel excavation to get in the pipes the structures don't do the trench safety but do the manholes anything that's a part you know if you mm -hmm. have an object that's a plug go ahead and have a plug if it plugs a part in your pipe list, pipe list or your part list, if plug is a part in your pipe list. Wow, that's alliteration. Um, then go ahead and have a structure that's that's there. I mean, if it's there, add it. If you're going to continuously do it, so like blow off valves, we had a, a, a part for um, reducers. We had a part for gate valves. We had a part for you know those are that's fine. I mean, just you know figure out what you need and get get you there qto is not a panacea that's going to solve your quantity takeoffs
but it's going to get your part your pipe lists super fast and you're going to get them right and you you couldn't employ anybody on the planet to get them as good you know as long as you're doing it right and you'll do it really fast and i think that's totally worth the time i mean that's that's what i set up so to answer your question justin i think it was justin that wasn't justin it was jacob it was asking about this leave this up to whoever's got to stand behind it right let the engineer be the guys that do that and the reason i say that is that Cost is much more difficult than a conversation we can have in two hours. Yeah. Um, and specifically what it comes down to is economy, but more importantly, economy of scale. If you have a million 18, linear, a million linear feet of 18 inch RCP, you're gonna get a better price than if you're only buying a hundred linear feet of 18 inch pipe. So the, the cost is, is not, it, it's not a hard cost. Right. It, it, if I asked you to build a fence and it was 10 feet long, it's going to cost you a lot more than if it's a, a million feet long. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. Right. Because you got to mobilize and get there and get the equipment. And those guys are going to get a discount if they buy a lot. You know, who who effing knows. Right. That's an art. It's not it's not a science. It's an art, sadly. Um, now, there is a number that's in the ballpark of reality, but it's still a, it's still an art. Uh, but quantity takeoff is a science. Right, the, 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 how much you have of something is is a mathematical known science. So try to get Civil 3D to give you the science, and get your engineers to do the art. And if you do that, hey, you're good. There so, was a comp Do you remember there was a company? I don't know if anybody remembers. There's a company that was going to have this giant database that updated all the time that would tell you if this is the pay item, this is the price. Like it was going to be hooked to QTOs. Probably about 2004 or five. I think Dana Pro, 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 Bear, Pro Bear. She was yeah. she was part of it and it just flopped. It just went pop because it was just too complicated to set up. And it was too many parts of that art, right? About what's the price and how does that work? It was just really complicated to ask. Well, because it's um, different between can you go to contractors that are doing this? And it's different from contractor to contractor. Of course. Basically by what you said. They have all these little things they do. They know what other projects they have and they're swapping things between projects to get, you know. And so really, I mean, we always approached it just what you said, Andy, the, the science part. What are the quantities? We know exactly what's in the design and leave it at that. Don't make any other assumptions. Yeah, and on cut fill, I'd always say plan quantity. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but contractors spit blood when I do it, which is, this is how many yards I think there are, but I'm just going to pay you this, and I don't care if there's more or less, you know, go away. Um, the, the dirtiest people on the construction side are the dirt contractors, right? And I'm, I'm not saying that because they got dirt in their fingers. That's You take it for what you want, but uh, and, and it's always wrong in their favor, but uh Justin, I don't want to hold you. If you got to jump, jump. So. I got to. I want to get more coffee brewed real fast before my meeting. So I think it's good. I think QTO is worth looking at. I think Ish, if he provides his categorization files and his takeoffs, I think you just need to you need to decide what's right for your firm, right? I mean, you don't need the city of Austin quantities per se, but it's a place to start. And in yeah. looking at the, 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 a lot of CAD guys don't go look at the uh, specification files. Right. Whose is this? This is mine. I, I shared it real fast. You know. Oh yeah, you're the same as me, except you're just simpler. And I'm 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 tagging that city of Austin number. I don't know what you're biasing. Uh, six, what's six oh four for for this one for Colorado? It's C dot. Yeah. So totally makes sense. Yeah, and you, know, you got plugs. He's got under drains. He's got copper P PVC water, ductile iron water, blow off valves like I do. I like your bins with your little degree symbol losing its mind um, it, well it's percent percent d and that's just how it reads it in excel or the csv but so that way when it spits it out it does a sense. degree symbol yeah makes sense are you doing you're doing all your water as pressure or gravity networks gravity okay yeah i did the same yeah, you know, so we, yeah you've got about as many as i've got or maybe more <laughs> so i mean i don't have as many boxes but uh you know we, we, we spent it we spent a whole day going creating part lists for boxes for box culverts because it was driving me nuts because i'm a drainage guy right and it's just like i need a i need a four by eight now i need a four by six and honestly you have to make the part and you have to thicken the the walls and the top and it's a big pain in the ass so no that's that's me that's me being me that's not you being you that's uh 
Uh, I just got tired of it. I wanted to want to give up. That's I, I think that Justin, I think you and I are on the same page about how we do things. Um, doesn't mean that we're right. I'm just telling right. you these are these are two guys that have done it for a while and it seems to work okay. Um, That's setting that up for for your own company is not hard, and I think you'll pay dividends. At least, you know, like I said, start easy. Start with wastewater. Start with something pretty simple, and then work your way up from there. And then you'll yeah. be like, oh yeah, this this rules. This totally rocks. Ish was right all along. I don't know why I wasn't doing this when I started. You know, um, Jacob, with you doing this for sur for survey, you could provide them with quantities of trees, signs, yeah. you know, um, and the elements on site. You know, clearing and grubbing areas. You know, you could add that as an add service to the things that you do to where they don't have to do it. Mm, okay. So my, my last last question I'd have is for for a finished project that y'all have, how long would y'all expect? If you told told somebody who knows what they're doing, I want a full quantity takeoff. I want quantities of everything. How long would you expect that to to take? A day, an a hour? Days. A couple it couple depends days. on the size of the project. Size, yeah. yeah. I mean, if okay. you're talking like 500 single family units, if it's a good CAD tech, it's a day. If it's if it's a if it's a novice CAD tech, it might take two. You know, and there's going to be some back and forth with with whoever's costing it. And you know, I might come back and say, yeah, I don't really like this pay item as this. I'd rather it be as of this. Like, don't give it to me in square yards. Give it to me in cubic cubic yards, or et cetera. And that's there's going to be some iteration there. But I think asking a CAD tech to do a large takeoff in a day. It is not an unreasonable ask. Is anybody going to argue with me on that? Uh, the only thing I would argue is, is I I know a lot of firms want to extend it to you know the least cost to get those those easy things done. But I just always saw a lot of issues. So what, putting was, putting junior staff on the QTO is that what you're getting at? Yeah, and yeah. and so we had one. You know, it didn't mean we didn't include them. But we had, you know, specific people who were pretty good at it to to do it at different times, just so that you know, because there's things that that won't get caught, you know, especially when you have some stuff done from the CAD file, some stuff done from a report, some stuff done from QTO, right. and so making sure that it's all caught. Um, but if you have a good checklist. And you, you know, a form of some sort. I hate doing forms and stuff, but if you have that, it gives that ability. But I, you're, you're, you are correct, Andy. I, I, it shouldn't take more than a day, unless it's a huge, huge. I mean, yeah. If you're doing, if you're doing 161, you know, toll road for 20 miles, then it's going to take you a week. You yeah, know, it's I mean, not going to take you a day. So. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a CVS site, it's a couple hours if you're doing a 500 unit subdivision it shouldn't be more than a day i mean it's you know it's, it's yeah, especially the cut field i hate the cut field the cut field is the hard part especially if you're doing haul distance and i hate doing haul distance i hate it civil 3d pretends like it does it well i still hate it so but that's on big long linear projects so hopefully none of y'all are doing those but that's that the, the, they they, well, they have a free haul distance like if i move the truck from this this distance to this distance <laughs> it's free but if i move it from this distance to this distance i charge and you're like why don't we just do cut fill by yards not by free haul distance um don't don't get me started on free haul distance it's who it who had you doing free haul uh toll road authorities oh yeah okay I mean, most of the private stuff, it's just a yard. Yeah, cubic it's a yard. site. Yeah, it's, it's a site. site. You know, it's a big deal. Cubic yard. And even on a big site, it's, you know, it, yeah. Don't, don't get me started. It, Civil 3D will do free haul. I think it actually has a way to calc it. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and I, I've never touched it. So uh, I, did, I did all that manually. It was, it was a mess. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the project, but a day. I mean, for a yeah. single family subdivision, an apartment complex, you know, a, a large industrial development, a day is probably a reasonable ask for that effort for, you know, one guy, two guys. A lot of times we would SWAT team it and I would say, Alan, you're going to do all the utilities. You're going to water, wastewater, storm, which is the easy one, right? Because we have it all as pipe networks. And then, um, Greg, you're going to do um, all the earthwork calculations. I'm going to do kind of ancillary you know, peripheral ENS, 
signing, striping, all that weird shit that it's hard to kind of think through. If you break it up, then those take a few hours a task, depending on who's doing it and making sure it's done right. I don't know if y'all are as old as I'll talk to y'all later. If y'all are as old as I am, I used to have a whole bunch of highlighters. And that's how I used to do it. It's it's not not a good way to do it, but that's how I used to do it. So. Yeah, if you 